In this presentation, we will continue on with part six of our C Corporation Comprehensive Problem, this time entering the ending balances into our balance sheet into our Schedule L in Form 1120. Here we are in our Form 1120. We're going to be focusing in on page six now. We're here on page six. This is going to be our Schedule L note. This is kind of like the beginning process you might have if you were to roll forward your tax return from a prior year to the current year. You'd have the beginning balances already in place and you're going to say, okay, I'm now going to put in the ending balances for the balance sheet. However, you're going to have some stuff that's like just popping up there already. You're going to say, well, I already have, you know, why is this popping up? We got the depreciation. Well, that's because it's taking the prior year information and using the depreciation schedules to try to help out with the end year numbers. We're going to have to determine if it is indeed a help or not because it, it could be a problem in that if there were any sales or something or purchases these numbers are wrong because they're not in our depreciation schedule yet so that could be a problem and we see that the retained earnings should be is already populating as well again we want the system to be able to do that ultimately but it might be a problem so far considering we haven't even entered the income statement yet so there's no way it could, it could properly calculate the ending retained earnings so we're guaranteed for that not to be wrong but then we're not going to let that throw us off we're going to continue pushing forward we're going to go straight down with the assets first on the balance sheet we're going to go back to our excel worksheet to see how we're going to do that we're going to go back up top now we could do this from our our balance sheet here or the trial balance you probably want to just be using uh, one source rather than bouncing back and forth so that when you go back through and tie everything out you, you can see where it's from i'm going to be using the trial balance here uh, to tie this out now what you want to consider as to whether this is going to be easier when, under one method or another. If you got the trial balance from uh, from basically the, the tax system, it may well be that you have a whole lot more accounts in the trial balance than are grouped together on the balance sheet. In that case, using the actual balance sheet might be easier than using the trial balance from from uh, the system. However, if you generate it, we generated the trial balance here from the tax return, so it should be you know you're not going to have a lot more accounts on the trial balance so just a couple things to consider on you know what tools you're going to use to input into the into the system the trial balance and the tax and the actual financial statements will be the same but the grouping of how many how many accounts are going to be grouped together will differ and there usually are less groupings in the in the actual financial statements than the trial balance that you would receive from a client however again we generated this trial balance here so it should be good to go now we're entering this this in uh, typically you would be entering this in basically as after you've entered all the adjusting entries that you would think that you would need to enter. Now we've entered all the adjusting entries. We will have one that we expect to have happening related to depreciation. So I'm going to enter this in first and then consider that adjusting entry that I know I'm going to have to deal with with depreciation and possibly the, the sale of an asset. So we can pick up any of these numbers here. I'm going to hide all these numbers just to get to this column so it's easier on the eye. So I'm going to go from N to Q, let go, right-click those selected areas and hide them. So now we're just focusing in on one column. That'll be easier to work with. We're going to start with cash. Cash is at the 1668601. Let's go back over. We're going to jump to that cell. I'm just going to jump over to it this time. Cash balance, there we go. And that's gonna be the uh, 1668601. So let's do, that's 1668601. And I'm gonna then go back over and I'm gonna highlight that. Once again, if I miss something, if I miss key something, I'm gonna keep pushing forward with it and then we'll find it once we go to the reconciliation process. We're gonna go to the 650,000 next. So now we're at the 650 for the accounts receivable. Then we have the allowance, the allowance. So I'm gonna make that green. I'm gonna say I green that one. And this is the 35,000. So I'm gonna go back over and I know the 35,000 is gonna show up as a, as a negative or subtraction problem in the software because we checked that last time with the beginning balances. Gonna make that green because it has been done. We'll take a look at the inventory, 1650, 1650 on the inventory. So I'm gonna say 1650000. And we have that, then we'll go on down two and notice we should have some kind of parent a similarity between the prior year and the current year you want to be consistent so if if you see basically how it was input in the prior year you want to be consistent with that in the current year as much as possible unless it was clearly a problem in the prior year so we're going to say one uh nine five zero 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 so we're going to say one nine five zero 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 
going to go back over and say that let's green that one off and then we're going to go to the investment in stock it's going to be the 240 so the 240 investment here they've got the 240 000 all right that one's done let's see what else we got let's make that one green as we go then we have the depreciable assets now this is one where we can say hmm maybe the maybe the software did that correctly for us so let's check that out we're going to go to the depreciable assets i'm going to go back over and go to the software and say let's see what it did to that because it's going to calculate that it's got the depreciation schedules but it's at 1 million seven so we're going to go ah didn't work why probably because there's sales or purchases and now we're gonna have to account for that later the sales or purchases the depreciation, the accumulated depreciation, then you would think would be off as well, right? Neither, neither of those are correct. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to have to override the system now, and then I'll go back to it. So I'm going to make a note of that. I'm going to go back over here and say, okay, let's make these yellow because I'm going to kind of override it right now. I'd like the system to calculate it in the final uh, work, but right now I'm going to force it to work and push forward. And then you might want to want to jot that down your open items you're going to say you know the uh, p p and e and property plant and equipment it has been overridden for now or something like that these aren't specific notes we're not going in, anywhere else with this but i'm going to go back to that later i want to make sure to remind myself uh, to go back to that is this an actual word that i can fix yeah okay and the accumulated Depre has has been overridden. Something like that. Overridden. 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 Something like that. And so then I, that's just to remind us to go back to it. So I'm going to keep that in my open items. I I usually just make them yellow over here. That might be enough. I might kind of I'm kind of doubling it up to do both of those. So now I'm going to I'm going to move forward with the override here. I'm going to go back over and say that this should be. Uh, what did it say? Now I forgot again. One six five zero. So one six five zero 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 zero, and then this one on the accumulated depreciation five oh five one oh one five oh five one oh one. That's a nice number. Five oh five one oh one. All right. So then I'm gonna highlight those because we did those and they're done. And that's what I do when stuff is done and make them green. And then we're on the land. That's gonna be the six hundred thousand. So the six hundred thousand in the land. So, and that might pull over. Let's check that out. That should pull over correctly because it's nothing's happened in that one. That one worked. No override necessary there. So we're going to go and say that one. Don't even need to put anything in. That makes us feel good. And then we have the 170 for the other assets. So other assets is going to be the 170. There we have that. I'm going to say okay. And that should be all of it. Let's go ahead and check our totals and see if we have come down to the total. 62835. 62835. If I highlight all of these, if I have a nice trial balance set up properly, as I believe I do here, it'll calculate it for us. Uh, 62835 looks like it's tying out properly. So I'm fairly confident on the asset side. I'm very confident. However, I did override these, but that's okay. We'll go back to those. Then we're going to go to the accounts payable. Accounts payable is next. So let's go back over, continuing forward. And the accounts payable is the 270000. So there we have that. Let's make that green because we've done that one. Then we have the other current liabilities 110, 110, so other. So 110000. Okay. And we'll make that green as well. Then we're at the notes payable nine or six nine zero six nine zero notes payable so here we are six nine zero 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 and then we'll make that one green and we'll finally go to the last liability of the 162 162 so pick that up one six two zero 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 so we have that now i could check the liabilities that we have uh, so far but we're not going to get that subtotal uh, so let's check where, we're, where we are at at this point so if I scroll down, I'm going to say, all right, if I add up my liabilities over here, does it add up 270000 plus 110000 plus 690000 plus 162000 equals the 1232. If I go back over here, does that tie out to what I got here? Because I got like these three numbers, four numbers, and that's the 1232. So liabilities look good. Going to make this green. Now we got the most complicated part the equity part now of course we would hope 
that the equity would kind of just roll forward here. So I have the 500. I got to put in the capital. So I'm going to put that in. And then, of course, retained earnings isn't going to tie out. We want this to tie out later at the end of the day, but it can't right now because it's going to be taking the net income, which we haven't entered yet. It's going to be, and it's going to be taking the any draws or, or dividends. So we can't expect this to be right yet. So that's okay. That's as far as basically we can go. So I'm going to put the 500,000 in the capital. And that's basically as far as we can, as far as we can go. I, I can, I'm pretty confident that it all verifies. I'm not going to try to override the retained earnings. I'm just going to say, okay, I've, I've checked the assets. I've checked the liabilities. The only thing that I'm off by, I know is this number for the retained earnings. And I want the system to be able to calculate that. Therefore, I'm going to then push forward to the data input on, on the income statement. Uh, and, and then, uh, then I'll come back to this this piece and see if it will be in balance after that point in time. Now, note the difference between these two numbers and the and the retained earnings at this point is the three one seven zero 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 minus the two nine uh, two seven one four three, and that's going to be the two four two eight fifty seven. Note that the difference there again is the book difference. It's 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 coming from the book side, not the tax side. So basically, these numbers in the balance sheet are basically the book side the reconciliation to the tax side is going to be happening with the M1 adjustments. Now, next time, what we're going to do is we're going to start to enter this information into the first page for basically kind of like the income statement. Now, note this income statement is typically at the end of the day will be on a, on a uh, tax basis, and then the difference will be the M1s. However, I'd like to make this page first on the book basis, tie, tie out the bottom line number to basically the book net income, and then remove any kind of m1s down here that would throw us off and then check that if we do if we get that right we should then be in balance over here we'll have something that's in balance then every step from that point forward we can have a point where we're in balance and then enter a transaction in such a way that it will reconcile keeping us in balance that we can then verify with our excel worksheet that's the system we plan on working next time going to the income statement